Hey guys, have you ever asked yourself how you can build your very first smoker if you don't have a lot of money? Well, hey, today's podcast is titled just that, how to build your first smoker on a very tight budget. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. Hey, so Scott and I had to jump in the truck and make a material run, so we figured, why not? Let's throw a couple podcasts at it here. So uh, one of the things I've been wanting to do is, is kind of reach out to the guys that have been listening to the podcast that haven't actually taken the plunge and built their first pit yet. Um, you know, there's a whole lot of reasons why you might not. The most significant one is is we may not even have the money to do this. Like that 250-gallon propane tank sitting out there in the driveway, you know, cooking a bunch of meat, you know, building that big offset or reverse flow, whatever. Like they don't come free, they're not cheap. So we have to we have to somehow find a way to build this thing, you know, with uh, some form of supplemental income or something like that. Because the last thing we want to do is take money out of the till, family till, you know, and and uh, build it. Then we got all kinds of external pressure on us to get the thing done, cook on it, you know, all these things. You don't get to take time and enjoy your build. So we decided that on today's podcast, we're going to cover that for you. So the first thing I would do here is, uh, you know, how to how to find material. Um, you know, the material is the expensive part, right? Well, tools also, but the biggest, most upfront thing we got to figure out is even if you had some other way of getting the tools, you got to find material. So there's there's three different ways that uh, you know you little tips that you can use to help you figure out how to get your to, your materials here. So the first one is actually kind of fun. Uh, it's one of my favorite ways. It's the, called the scavenger hunt. So over the years, I have had a knack for looking at something and being like, man, that thing looks like a smoker. You know, so you can just like be driving down the road, looking out the window, like you see all these places on the side of the road and somebody's going to have a jump pile sitting there that might have tanks or pipe or, you know, something like that out there that you can use. There's also salvage yards and stuff like that that you can go to. But the scavenger hunt aspect, it takes time. You know, you can uh, you can take your time and start gathering up materials, rounding stuff up. I talk to people all the time that's like, man, I got a real good deal on this trailer. He might have spent 100 bucks to buy a used trailer instead of spending 400 for all the materials to build his trailer, you know, like the axles and stuff. So he was able to, to salvage out, you know, just go on a scavenger hunt and, and find stuff to, to help him build with. Another, another pretty good way of, of approaching it is uh, called the buddy deal. Um, the buddy deal is, is kind of a 50-50 thing in my opinion. Uh, just depends on how good of buddies you got. You know, you can sometimes barter, um, like it, let's say that your buddy is in the propane tank, you know, business. He like works for a propane company or something like that. Well, a lot of times you might be able to swap him some kind of a favor or, uh, you know, maybe owe him a buddy deal in the future, you know, kind of the favor program. You know, if you can, you can sometimes work your way in like that and uh, come up with your material. Maybe maybe a pipe yard or something that you got a buddy that works there that they got something that they're gonna try to salvage out or something, you know, you might be able to work through him. Sometimes it takes some time here too, you know? So it's really a question of like time or money, I suppose. And then the third way is like I said, salvage. Um, You know, you can actually go out if you've got a little bit of pocket cash that you can use. Um, you know, you can go out and start looking at these junkyards and scrap yards and stuff like that, maybe comb through uh, Craigslist, um, those kind of things. And you can usually come up with somebody that's got something that they don't even know it's worth using for building a cooker. They're, they're just trying to get rid of some scrap and get some pocket change themselves, you know. Um, so you can start there. Like the, the most critical component of the entire operation is to get your part that you're going to use for the cook chamber. So. That's kind of what you'll be doing there. So the second thing we got to think about is like how to find money, because at some point you're not going to be able to salvage 100 percent of everything or or uh, scavenger hunt everything for your build. You're going to at some point need to come up with some money to, to fund the operation. 
um, whether that be for you know welding wire or something like that you know whatever you got to buy filler rod and stuff so you know the first thing you can do is just like look around you what's laying around that you don't need you know you can salvage those things and turn them into cash for instance uh, clean out the attic clean out the garage start flipping the things like you know personally I got like a boatload of decoys duck decoys and stuff that would be the first thing that would go I love duck hunting and all that but I ain't done it for five years or so and you know those things are a little outdated anyway I could always get new stuff um, when I'm ready so you kind of wind up prioritizing your hobbies and then turning the the stuff that you don't need into cash you know there's also this concept that you know we've used quite a lot in the smoker builder uh, business actually called she money when when I started out like you had to say air quotes when you say she money when I started out you know the 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 barbecue part of the of my life was a hundred percent hobby and entertainment and uh, I already had another business and basically all the money gets where it went it went to mama that check every week would go to go to my wife and the family and uh, you know we just kind of that's just the way it was and the last thing you want to do when you've already got a business venture going that uh, requires a lot of your energy and time and everything like that and uh, you're buying trucks and all these things for the other business the last thing you want to do is go in there and try to take money from the personal till to, to buy materials or tools or anything with. So the, we, we came up with this she money concept, which is money she don't know about. So what you do there is you leverage some other thing that you got, some other gig that you got going. You know, for instance, in the, in the refrigeration trade, we had a whole lot of scrap. And, uh, you know, I was able to, like when we, when we tore out equipment, that stuff had to go somewhere and uh, it was too costly for the business to sit there and pay a man to go out there and cut it all up. So that kind of became my side hack. I'd go out there and start cutting up material and take it to the scrap yard. Eventually, we wound up getting enough material laying around here and there that, uh, you know, I had a pretty good, you know, scrap operation going. And that scrap money would pay for, for the material I needed or whatever. So you wind up coming up with ways to make something from nothing is kind of what that means. And then it's not on the it's not on the the family documentation anywhere, you know. And I'm not trying to tell you to be dishonest by any means, but um, you know, if your family needs it worse than you do, you know, that's one thing. You can always split it and give her half, and you keep the other half. But because she doesn't technically have to not know about it. But anyway, you know, you get the point. I'm not trying to get you in trouble. So the third methodology behind this, how we can come up with this material or the money for our material and tools and stuff is called trading and swapping. So you might have something that might actually be of value to somebody else and you might not even have to get into the cash game. You might be able to just take something and flip it and turn it into something else and then maybe take that thing and flip it and swap that and turn it into a little bit of money or something or whatever. You know, you just gotta work the deals think outside the box what do I have that I don't need that I walk past every day that I use 1% of my time and you know when I do use it I wind up either working on it or something's wrong with it or it's not working great for me you know anything like that that thing's got to go that can turn into a smoker so the third thing we're going to talk about here is build and sell this is another way to finance your build. So you may be trying to build up the, the cash to build that 250 gallon or 500 gallon reverse flow on a trailer, let's say, which is gonna be a lot of material, a lot of money. And um, you know, you just, uh, you just don't have enough capital to start that. And you really don't, you know, the trade and swapping thing ain't happening fast enough for you. But maybe you've accumulated enough assets or materials or cash and she money that you could actually start a smaller build. So one really good way to just kind of get the, scra the itch scratched is to start building a small smoker. Like I, my first one I ever built in my whole adult life was built with a lacquer thinner 55 gallon barrel. Now it wasn't the greatest and I messed it up pretty bad and that was back in the early 90s, probably about 95 I think. And, uh, you know, I don't even know whatever happened to it. I think it got hauled off. But 
anyway, then my second pit I ever built was out of two air tanks out of the back of a truck. And uh, you can actually see that build on the forums, smokerbuilder.com slash forums, under my first pit. And uh, anyway, when you, uh, when you get started, you know, there's totally nothing wrong with finding something small to start with, building that, and then just straight up selling it. Maybe somebody else has the money and they're willing to pay you to build it. That's another option there. So you can always start with, you know, small pits that, uh, that don't cost a lot of money to fabricate, you know, or you could even just do it for somebody else, buddy deal your way that way. You get to learn how to build and you get the, a little bit of pocket change to be able to finance your next build. So those are all good tactics. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate you listening to the podcast. Uh, I hope you find value in this every week. Um, one thing I want to throw in here just that you will find helpful in your journey is this thing we call the Build With Us online course. So if you go to smokerbuildermfg.com, in the main page, there's a little red bar and it says online course. Click that or you can find it down in the comments or description on this uh, video slash podcast. And, uh, you know, get in there. It's, uh, it's, a, it's an online class that you have lifetime access to that we're always adding to. Every, every two to three weeks, we put a new video in there. Um, it's literally us building a smoker and showing you all of the different stuff, everything from how to run a CNC plasma table, the basics of it, all the way up to have general fabrication and the, the entire build of a smoker. So get on over there and, and get your start that way. It's easier to learn by watching, I think. And uh, you know, you've also got us, we're here to help you. So anyway, we appreciate you. Make sure and subscribe if you don't mind, leave us a review and we'll see you next time.